So this is it, new products. The first one. We're low, we're, we have um, type A machine. Low, low quantity, but high quality yeah, new so products today. We, we got that printer I was talking about. Um, I'm going to break my rule here. Um, so the code is still jam. If you're ever thinking about it, getting one of these printers, it's 10% off and it's free UPS it's ground. It's less than anywhere else. It this kind of blows chance. for us, but you would be getting a good deal. So if you're thinking about this printer, um, it's a good deal. And it's amazing. And yeah. it's apparently this is like the best printer you can get that like other than the Ember, which, you know, has a small build volume. But yeah. very high quality. Well, you need like a garage because it's like a vat of but, chemicals. But this that. one has um, high quality, high precision, and the extruder design is different than other um, extrusion style printers. Um, so you actually get the, and I even saw it. I was like, wow, it's like a really slim um, extruder. And so they actually have uh, very fast heat up times. And um, the edges look really good. So if you look at the detail on the gun blade, I mean, it's amazing. It looks yeah. molded. Okay. Um, it's really good quality. So check out the Type A. I'm, I'm going to get one of these maybe and try them out. But this is like our top pick for best 3D printer out there. Right, right now. now. High praise. OK, Lady Ada, this just came out moments ago. ago. I, um, I didn't really eat today. And this product looks tasty. Delicious. This is the new um, capacitive touch shield for Arduino. We had um, a version for the Raspberry Pi called the capacitive touch hat, and it was actually really popular. People really liked it a lot, and so I actually just spun it up into a shield. So if you see here, oh, can you go back one? I would like to go back one. Go back one, please. Thank you. Um, so this is a shield, so it goes onto an Arduino, works with any Arduino, Yun, Leonardo, Mega, Uno, Duemily Nove. Um, any kind of Arduino you have that ha um, that has the SDA and SCL pins over there in, in the corner, and then um, as you see, there's these like weird figure eight holes, and there's like it's like two big holes and a teeny hole, and I'll show you how this works. Basically, it's designed so you can clip an alligator clip onto it, and then clip that alligator clip to something else, conductive, because the alligator clip is like you know it's a wire, um, and the the way this works is. The chip all the way on the left, the little diamond square all the way over there next to the Adafruit logo, it can sense when a person or an animal basically touches one of the 12 contacts. So it's really good for like detecting when somebody grabs something or touches something. Uh, you might have, uh, you know, you have capacitive touch screens on your phone, but maybe you've seen elevators where the buttons are capacitive or you have a microwave with capacitive buttons mm -hmm. or anything where you don't have to push, you just kind of lightly tap with your I'm finger. A, I'm a person and an animal. Does it work for someone like yes, me? Yes. Okay. If you're a person and an animal, it also works. But I'm just saying because people are like, well, it worked with my dog or my cat. So like when my cat drinks out of the bowl, I'll get notified. Okay. Yes, it will work for that as well. Okay. Um, so basically this anything, is fruit demo, I mean. yeah, and so you can connect to the other side of the alligator clip to anything that is um, electrically conductive or c capacitive. And it doesn't have to be something that it actually can pass electricity. So like fruit, for example, like won't, you can't use it as like a conductor, but it works very well because it's full of like slightly salty water. So anything that's wet or on the inside will work really well. And so this is kind of fun if you want to make like fruit drums or like banana pianos and all on the right. We also, on the right over there, we also have a um, glass ITO, covered glass. So glass wouldn't work normally, but if you uh, get glass that's been covered with indium tin oxide, which we have in the store, it can be a transparent um, conductor. And then all the way, um, okay, like that. And then if you uh, go all the way to the left, yeah. Yeah, keep going, keep going. Okay, there. Can you zoom into that? Yeah, I can. Please? Nice work. Thank you very much. Um, in addition to these delicious fruits, we also have over there a strip of co uh, copper tape. So we have uh, Pyrolux, which is uh, copper flex material, um, and also uh, probably uh, um, uh, uh, in copper. Uh, sorry, uh, Ninja, uh, not Ninja uh, Pyrolux, uh, copper tape, and also um, conductive fabrics. You see all the way on the left there. There's a conductive knit fabric that works, it's, knit, it's um, meshed with a silver or thread on nylon that will work really well. Um, Velostat also might work. Anything that's even slightly conductive will work pretty well. So just look around, metallic stuff works great. Um, and I'll just show really quickly on the overhead how you clip it. I would be great. We have this overhead and I feel like we should use it. Let's use this overhead. Okay. So. Um, okay, just, so you've got this, you've got this thing. Yeah, I'm, I don't have a full demo because I, I just- Do you want me to store. zoom in? Yeah, sure, sure. I can, can zoom in. Zoom in a little bit. Just onto the shield. You just want like that? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Wow, look at how everything I want is happening today. Yeah. Okay, good, thank you. Um, so yeah, this is just like soldered onto 
Um, an Arduino only uses the SCL and SDA pins, and then you grab your alligator clip, and you just clip onto it like that, and now it makes a nice good connection. Okay. And then you can clip the other side to your fruit. Okay, so I should probably zoom out now, though. No, no, this is great. Look, it's just fruit. You think it's good? Okay. Yeah, I mean, this is this is pretty much a demo. I'm going to do it. This is the demo. I'm going to do a... You just plug in fruit. That's it. That's all you got to do. Well, now the um, Arduino can detect when um, the fruit has been touched. So... Yeah. I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't do anything because I haven't programmed it to do anything. Um, but when the fruits touch, you can detect it. So, for example, if you connect it to a Leonardo, you can have it send key presses. So the demo I'm going to be doing. If you have it um, uh, hooked up to processing, you can maybe have videos play. Or it basically just looks like an input, but you can just clip onto any of these 12 contacts. And uh, people really like um, this chip. So we have a really good library tutorial for it. It's really easy to use. And, uh, yeah, people just love capacitive touch stuff. So now you have 12. Capacitive touch contacts, lots okay. of them. And tonight, the star besides you, Lady Ada, is one of my favorite products that now has an update. Yeah. Everybody, get ready. This is the world premiere of Gemma version 2. Yay, confetti. One of the best wearables just got better. Um, for those of you who are asking right now, you're viciously typing, um, here's the deal. This is what the Arduino Gemma is going to be. We have to work with Arduino, and they have to do lots of approvals, and there's packaging, and there's all sorts of other things. So we have always been working on the Adafruit Gemma. Also, some people might want their electronics in black, like me. And so um, this is available now. We may eventually only have the Arduino Gemma. So there's also a way to kind of beta test before yeah. we release yeah. the Arduino Gemma into the world. Before we make a billion of these. We won't make a billion. We only made like a couple hundred of these. Just, just I mean, it's it's basically it's a, the Arduino Gemma will be electrically identical. It's just going to be blue. It's going to be a lovely teal blue with the Arduino logo on the back instead of the Adafruit logo. Yeah. But otherwise, it's exactly the same uh. PCB. Um, and this is the upgrade uh, to the Gemma. So the Gemma is our small wearable. Um, electronic platforms. So, for example, I have um, a Gemma bracelet here that we did, and this is just a, a really good example of one of the many. What's the overhead? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so I want you to talk about like the differences or whatever. Yeah, and this is with the older Gemma, and I'll turn this. The floor is yours, my lady. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Gemma intensifies. Yeah. Um, so this is the Gemma, and this is the Gemma version one. And for example, this is like a bracelet that you can um, clip on and wear. So we made like a, a, a glowing NeoPixel ring bracelet. And this is one of many projects. We also have this um, lovely tiara. Hold on, let me plug this in. Just give me one second. Should I just recharging? Okay, so we also have like um, you know a tiara project that had um, a Gemma in it, for example, um, and uh, you know I had like LEDs and stuff. Maybe I'll this is what lights up. Um, so this is like a, a basically a small round microcontroller, and you can see the little square in the center is the chip, and then there's a USB connector and a battery connector, and you can make um, glowing tiaras and such. Um, and this has actually been really popular, and, and we are working with um, Arduino, which is the maker of the popular Arduino Uno, to make um, the, so this is the Arduino difference. Gemma, which is the next version. But in the meantime, we, we have kind of like the Adafruit, the black version, before the official Arduino one comes out. And it's, it's basically very similar to the Gemma. It uses an AT Tiny 85 microcontroller, which is, which is an 8 kilobyte microcontroller, but it's really low power and pretty simple and very small, which is you know the trade-off for not having 32 bits and built-in Ethernet and Wi-Fi and stuff. Um, it still has six pads, uh, power and ground and uh, three volt output, and then three data pins, which is not a lot. So there's three pins that you can use for input or output. But for most people, that's fine. They just want like a switch and then some NeoPixels and maybe an analog sensor. So for projects like that, this is really great because it's so small. Um, so the update between the old Gemma and the new Gemma is the old Gemma used a mini USB connector. You can sort of see here. It's a little bit chunkier. And then the new one has a micro USB connector. So um, we're moving slowly to everything being micro USB because all phones and tablets and where, when, you know, gadgets and GPSs use micro USB. So we moved from mini USB to a micro USB. 
And then we also moved from um, this large SOIC package for the microcontroller to a QFN. And that makes it much smaller. And with that space that we saved, because the chip is smaller and the connector is smaller, we had an um, added space for an on-off switch. So the problem that we were seeing, not a problem, but like a common request was, uh, normally you would um, you know, connect your battery up to your Gemma, but like on, in this case, you would have to like solder in a switch. Um, so you'd see here like the, the battery comes in and then there'd be another switch connector. It was a little bit inelegant. Uh, and people were like, well, you know, it would be really nice if there's an on-off switch on the Gemma, like the Flora, but to keep it small, we didn't have an on-off switch. But now that we have a little bit more space, we added a handy little on-off switch so you can quickly turn on and off your Gemma. So that's the, the big improvement. Basically, an on-off switch has been added, and it's a micro USB jack, so it's even slimmer, and you can use your cell phone cable. Otherwise, it's exactly the same size. Um, the battery connector and USB connector are pretty much in the same exact location. This one just is a little shorter. Um, the reset button is the same. The onboard LEDs are the same. The power draw is the same. Um, the code is the same. The bootloader is the same. The, the Arduino ID modification is the same. Everything's the same. The only upgrade to this little microcontroller is micro USB and on off switch, and it's even the same price. That's a big deal. So it's lovely. Okay. Um so someone had asked, can they program the gem in C if they wanted to? In fact, the Arduino language is basically C. It's actually C++, mm -hmm. but uh, you don't really end up using objects because there's not that much space anyways on uh, an 8 kilobyte uh, microcontroller. So you basically are programming it in C. If you look at all of the Gemma tutorials, you'll, you'll, and you know C, you'll be like, wow, look yeah. at all this um, awesome C-like language stuff. You can basically define functions. And, and program the pins as much as you like, and we have libraries you right. use well, for NeoPixels and um, such. I want to say good work, Lady Ada, and also a shout out, of course, to Becky, who's taken the Gemma platform and put it in so many projects that made this uh, something that we can continue to keep doing. So. Yeah, Je and, uh, we have like a dozen Gemma projects, and, and Becky was the one who said, hey, can you put an on-off switch on? And I was like, yeah. you know what, that's a good idea. I should do and, that, so and Stecky also, Burn. And also, um, I'd like to thank Massimo and Pietro, who's helped move Arduino Gemma um, very fast. So right now we are just wrapping up um, some of the final boxes and we have the PCBs, like everything is coming together. We should have the official Arduino Gemma shipping soon. Very soon. But yeah. in the meantime, you can pick up one of these until we do the changeover and help us beta test. I don't believe there's any reason that these wouldn't work out, but it's always good to uh, to have only 100 before you make yeah. 10,000. I mean, one of the things that, oh, by the way, that's new products, everybody. That's new products. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, yeah, new products.